Those questions about hostages remain. It appears preparations for a ground offensive in Gaza are underway. Let's take a closer look at Gaza with retired U.S. Army Major Mike Lyons. Uh, Major Lyons, appreciate you being here. To start, you know, we hear constantly about just how uh, tight it is in Gaza, yeah. for lack of a better term. About two million people, mm -hmm. an area about the size of Chicago. What complications does that bring for any type of ground offensive? Yeah, I mean, tremendous. I think we're going to potentially see casualties and civilian casualties like we haven't seen since the Second World War, just based on what Israel has said. They've declared war here. They've said, use the word like siege. Siege from a military perspective means flatten. It means we're going to surround, choke off, you know, the supply goes out here. I want to talk a little bit about that courageous CNN crew, because they're sitting right here in Kafar Azza here. And, and they're so close to that Gaza border here. And what, the, what they're under is missile fires coming from on the other side. They still have capacity. Hamas is still firing rockets inside of Israel. And so though the air uh, frames you hear are Israel forces on kind of station, ready to go, ready to knock them out. But again, it just shows me they still have capacity. They've, they've not just stopped with regard to attacking Israel. What are the biggest challenges for Israeli forces if we do see the ground incursion? I think Nick made a very yeah. good point because he's had years of experience covering the region, mm -hmm. that in his estimation, they, they are not amassed enough at this point for an imminent incursion. That's, that's, that's his read on the ground. But right. whenever it may happen, if it does, what are the challenges they face once they get into Gaza? Well, I think, first of all, it's going to take them a while to wound up as has been part of a large offensive operation in the right. past. It's going to take days in order 300,000 reservists have been mobilized. And then once they go in, you know, what is their objective going to be? Are they going to attack from different sides? Are they going to come from this side here to cut off uh, Hamas troops? Obviously, this is where the center of gravity is in here with regard to where the Hamas troops are. But I think Israel has got to be very concerned overall about from a strategic perspective. They have potentially have enemy here coming in this direction. They have Hezbollah coming up from the north. And if they can mass troops in the West Bank, this is going to be the problem here of trying to fight war on three fronts. And that's why they've called 300,000 troops up. So they have to be able to put troops in all these locations. But once they get go back to Gaza, once they get into this location here, it's going to be street fighting, house to house, and again, large civilian casualties. We talk about the strikes that we've seen uh, over the course of the last several days. There have been yep. uh, airstrikes. We've seen uh, numerous strikes in very specific facilities, at least according to the IDF, and what their targets are. What do yeah. those tell you? Yeah, they're going after, if you look at some of the things, these are mosques now. So they have, you know, they're taking everything off the table with regard to, um, you know, collateral damage. Again, normally the military wouldn't attack these kinds of targets. They're saying, they are clearly military targets. Uh, and in this case, they're leaving nothing behind. You know, in the past, they would be more discriminate with regard to what they would go after specific things. Mm -hmm. Here, they're literally letter leveling all of the kind of targets they're going after. There's nothing left after. And those are both mosques that you're showing. Yeah. There, yeah. And so, the before and the after. Before and the after, yeah. On Saturday, there were some rockets fired from Hezbollah in southern Lebanon into Israel. Then there was a bit of a, a pause, the Secretary of State Blinken said. And then yesterday, seeing more. Can you speak to the... Uh, complication of trying to fight Hezbollah in the north of Israel while doing the rest. Yeah, that, that's really what Israel's got to be concerned about because they'll have to put troops to the north here, and that's, this is where they would come from here. And then also it would introduce, we've warned now the Syrian government that says, look, if, we, if Hezbollah decides to come in, and they're, they're good fighters. They've, they've been part of the Syrian civil war. They have that kind of experience. Then it opens up potentially a front where Damascus becomes a target in this area here. I, I think the Israel is going to be forced to put ground troops up there. What, what Israel's advantage here in this conventional war is shock effect. They bring yeah. tanks, they bring air power. The problem is the enemy's not fighting that kind of battle. This is that's a conventional. It. Exactly. That's it. And that's why this whole thing started. This is the, you know, they, they prepared for a war that they didn't get. And yeah. that's really why they're in the situation they're right now. What are Hezbollah's uh, capabilities? Uh, compared to Hamas, because yesterday... Better, were, better. Yeah, better, more, uh, have greater capability. Uh, again, still don't really have that shock effect, but they're good fighters, and there's, there's more of them. Israel has got to be concerned. This, this now creates, if, if they come in from the north here and, and the attack here are coming from the south, this now creates the, the nightmare 1973 scenario of an attack on both fronts.